Hello my friends, in today's video I would like to show you some of my most favorite accessories that I use with Sony a6500 and that may help you utilize the potential of your a6500 or a6300 to get the best possible results and enjoy using the camera as much as possible. The first item on this list may be a bit controversial because it is a kit lens. If you need an all-round lens for your a6500 or a6300, you have basically three options if we don't count adapted lenses. There is 16 to 50 mm f3.5 to 5.6 optical steady shot power zoom kit lens, 16 to 70 mm f4 OSS Zeiss Vario Tessar, and 18 to 105 mm f4 optical steady shot G power zoom lens. Out of these options, the 16 to 50 mm kit lens is my most favorite one because, as I found out in my review, it is sharp enough for casual shooting, and other options do not seem to be much sharper. It is very small and light, it is stabilized, ratio between size and focal range is great, it is cheap, I bought mine for around 122 euros new, and in combination with a6500 or a6300 it makes for a great package for traveling and casual shooting. The second item on my list is an adapter. Selection of Sony lenses compared to competition is not that great and better Sony lenses are also quite expensive so it is good to have an option to use lenses made for other mounts and you can do that with the use of an adapter. I personally use Sigma MC11 Canon version because it provides full functionality with compatible Sigma lenses especially 18 to 35 mm f1.8 that I like to use a lot and also 50 to 100 mm f1.8 it works with most of Canon full frame lenses, but one big disadvantage is that it doesn't work with Canon EFS lenses. Those are APS-C lenses and they just physically don't fit. Cheaper alternative is Comlight and there's also Metabounds EF to E mount, but I personally haven't used those. Next item is a Sharp Prime lens. Both A6500 and A6300 have great 24 megapixel sensor and I definitely recommend getting a sharp prime lens so that you can fully utilize potential of that sensor in terms of image quality. I recommend getting a prime lens with focal length that you use the most. There is a couple of alternatives. Sony makes two affordable prime lenses, 35mm and 50mm f1.8 optical steady shot lenses for their APS-C sensor cameras. Sigma makes 19mm, 30mm and 60mm f2.8 DNR series lenses. There is a review of 19mm version on this channel. And there is also 30mm f1.4 Sigma prime lens. Semiang also makes a couple of sharp prime lenses, for example the new 35mm f1.8 autofocus lens and 12mm f2 wide angle manual lens. Next are the batteries. A6500 and A6300 drain batteries a lot, especially when you're shooting 4K, but you can't really blame them, considering that they use full sensor readout and downsampling. A6500 also has in-body image stabilization. Battery is also physically small, so you just need to change the batteries more often. Fortunately, there is a wide variety of third-party batteries available, and they are quite cheap, so just get a couple of those. I have three batteries for A6500, for me it is enough, you might want to get more or you can use the next item on the list, which is a power bank. A6500 and A6300 can be charged using USB, which means that you can also charge it using the power bank and the charging process is also quite fast if you use 2.4 amp power bank. I use this uh, Xiaomi 10,000 mAh Pro power bank. I can recharge the battery very quickly using this power bank and you can also charge the camera while using it if your power bank has sufficient output, uh, but that can introduce some overheating issues. Next on my list is something to carry your camera. For A65 and 6300 my most favorite strap is Peak Design Leash, the lightest of their lineup. I like it because it is adjustable and it is also very easy to attach and detach. I have the old version but I definitely recommend the new version. I have upgraded it with version 2 anchor links. I also made a video about those because these fit A6500's mounting point without using those annoying little triangles and trust me it makes a big difference. If you intend to use your A6500 with heavy lenses you can also use Peak Design Slide with the same attaching mechanism. There is also a review of that strap on this channel. 
Another accessory that I really like to use with my A6500 is a Gorilla Pod. I use it as much as possible to avoid using big tripod. You can use it for different purposes as a table tripod, a selfie stick to mount the camera almost anywhere. It's just a very handy thing to have. I use Joby DSLR zoom because the size is the best for me and the ball head on this one is also high quality and lightweight. It is generally well made. Sometimes I also use it with this ball head that I bought for $17 from China. I'll make a review of that one soon. There's a lot of Gorilla Pods to choose from. For example, the $7 Gorilla Pod also works well with lighter setups. Next up is something to capture the audio because most of A65 and 6300 owners will probably want to shoot video and onboard mic is decent but not great. I personally use two mics. First one is Rode VideoMic Pro. It needs no introduction, it is a shotgun mic, so it is great for capturing sound coming from a particular direction. It has its own amp and I really like the audio quality. Actually all of my voice and videos on this channel was recorded with this mic plugged into sound card in my computer. Second mic that I use is cheap $80 Come Light Love mic. But if you have in-camera settings right and you use a bit of post enhancement in something like Adobe Audition, I actually don't think that it sounds any worse than Rode Love Mic and I will make a review of this mic soon. I will also include one honorable mention on this list, which is Sigma 18-35 f1.8 art series lens. This may be my most favorite lens to use with Sony a6500. It is extremely sharp, it lets in a ton of light and a picture shot with this lens looks just amazing. But there are two obvious downsides to this lens and those are the size and weight and short focal range. And I have to confess that since I bought this lens I haven't used it so much because of these two downsides. For example I didn't take it on my trip to Bali because I didn't want to carry it around all day. And the focal range of 18 to 35 millimeters, which is full frame equivalent of 27 to 52.5 millimeters, is also quite short. But the results are really great, so I will definitely be taking this lens out more in the future. There's also a review of this lens on my channel, so take a look at that if you're interested. There's one more item that I want to include on this list, but I can't really call it a camera accessory, and that is a computer monitor. Monitor is often an underrated item on the list of equipment that photographers and content creators use, but in my opinion it is really important to be able to see accurate reproduction of what you have shot and also to be able to see what your pictures or footage actually looks like and also to be able to adjust your pictures accordingly in post. I use Bang BL2711U. It is a 4K IPS 10-bit monitor. It is quite affordable for 10-bit 4K monitor. The colors are very accurate, 4K resolution looks great and it is actually one of my most favorite pieces of electronics that I have bought in a very long time. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos. There will be part two of this video in future where I will talk about more advanced accessories like gimbals, cages, software and so on. And maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss that. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.